bind him, no, not with chains, because he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces. I don't know how you can do that. You know, to pop a chain, okay, I can see that one, but, you know, to, to bust those iron, you know what fetters are, those are the clamps that they put around your wrists and your ankles, to bust them into pieces? Whew! I mean, something going on there. And no man could, neither could any man tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him, and he cried with a loud voice and said, What have I? Now remember I said, when people have de demonic con control going on in their lives, they still think it's them. He didn't say, what do we have to do with you? He said, what do I? Okay, you got that? What do I have to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. So see, the guy is so influenced by these demons that he thinks he's going to be tormented also. He doesn't understand that their thoughts that are rolling through his brain are also come. He has he has no discernment between their thoughts and his thoughts. That's why he said I and me. He didn't say we and them. Okay. For he said said to him, for he said to him, come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. He asked him, what is thy name? And he answered. My name is Legion, for we are many. So they're starting to kick in now. Okay? For we are many. And he besought him much that he would not send them out of the country. Well, you can send... If you've ever had to deal with people that are demonized, they will say goofy stuff to you. Well, you can get rid of it. Just don't make him go too far away. No, we're going to make him go far away so he doesn't mess you up no more. Okay? Why? Because they like it. If people, especially if they've been demonized for a long time, they like it. Why do they like it? It's crazy. It's messing them up. I understand that, but their brain has been really worked over. Okay? You know, I'll, I've related this story before, but maybe some of you haven't heard this. There's this guy that, that came to the church one time, and he was... And, and to make a long story short, the power of God came down in the service and he, he went from shaking and acting kind of weird to down on the floor and slithering like a snake. He's the first two rows of that, the first two pews, they were empty, boy. <laughs> now, those kind of things don't bother me. I know what it is. I got authority over that. I'm not scared. And this guy was like six, seven. He was really tall. I mean, just in the natural, he could have tore me up. But I'm not scared of that. Don't be afraid. So I grabbed him and stood him up, put him over against the wall, and he's twitching and all this. And, and to make a long story short, I cast the devil out. I was waiting for the guest speaker to do it, but he didn't, so I did. I just pulled him down close to me, you know, and whispered in his ear, come out. You didn't shout? He ain't deaf. So the next night he comes to church and he, he tells me, Pastor, man, he goes, I heard all over. I said, yeah, you should. You're not supposed to be able to do that. He goes, it seemed like a dream to me. I said, yeah. Probably lots of things seem like dreams now. If you think back, he goes, yeah, kind of, yeah. And, and so I said to him, because he, he had, he had a, a, a girl with him and, and they had a little girl. I said, you married to that girl over there? She was pregnant again. She's like this. I said, you married to that little girl over there? And he goes, well, I starts giving me excuses about welfare and stuff like that. And I said, uh, you want that thing to come back? No. I said, then you make a choice. You can keep bamboozling the government or you can stay free. He said, marry us tonight. No, we've got a special speaker tonight. <laughs> Can't marry you tonight, but we'll get it taken. God will give you credit for your, for your honesty and wanting to make things right. Okay? But see, the, the thinking's messed up, so we need to help them. Amen? Yes. 
<clears throat> so, verse 11 says, Now there were nigh unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding, and all the devils besought him, saying, Send us unto the swine that we may enter into them. And forthwith there, uh, Jesus gave them leave, and the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine, and the herd ran violently down a sweet, uh, steep place into the sea. There were about 2,000, and they choked in the sea. Just think about that. Them pigs had enough sense to know this ain't good. You know, that, <laughs> okay, and and they came to Jesus. Or wait a minute, verse fourteen. And and they told that, and they that fed the swine fled and told it to the city and in the country. And when, and they went out to see what it was that was done. And they came to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind and they were afraid. You wonder what kind of influence they had. No, really. But here's the thing. No matter how powerful or how many de demons influence someone, they have a free will. When we bind the strong man, you notice that when they got back to him, he's in his right mind. This guy had 2,000 demons. His brain has cleared up real quickly. Okay, so when we bind the influence of, the, of those of the demonic activity in people, we give them a period of time for them to be able to think clearly. Okay, so no matter how many, how much influence there is, everyone has a free will. Even though this guy was crazier and all get out, he had a free will and he was able to run to get help. Now he wanted to negotiate when he got there. Right? Well, don't send them too far away. Okay? He wanted to negotiate. Don't worry about that stuff. You just get them set free. And why do you talk about stuff like this? Number one thing that Jesus said when he said these signs follow is they shall cast out demons. First thing, not the last thing, not, you know, just in case we ever possibly maybe would run across. No, no, they're around. Okay? So when we bind the strong man, it gives people a space of time to think with a right mind. You need to understand this. Every sinner is already forgiven. They just haven't received it. Every sinner is already forgiven. Jesus died 2,000 years ago. Right? In Isaiah, he said, your, your, your sins and your trans I'm not going to remember them no more. Okay? So every sinner is already forgiven. They just haven't acted on it. Okay? So every sinner... Now, this is going to... Understand... I, I want you to understand this. Whether they're directly influenced by the devil or not, every sinner is not thinking in their right mind. They are not thinking in their, oh yeah, you know, they have business and they do this and that. They are not thinking in their right mind. If they were thinking in their right mind when you said Jesus, they'd go, yeah, how do I do that? It would be easy to get people saved. They wouldn't argue with you. They wouldn't go, well, I don't know. You know, how can you prove it to me? And you know, all that stuff. They wouldn't do that. They'd just go, yes. I've been waiting to hear this. Yeah. But the blinder is up here. If they can't think, they can't understand. Okay? So we need to bind the, the demonic influence on their mind so they can go, Oh, Jesus died for me? That sounds like a wonderful thing. Amen? So we have authority to help them. We have authority to help them. If, and we have the anointing, yes. But, and, and listen, you don't have to have permission to pray for the lost. You remember I said, you don't pray, Jesus save them, because he, ain't gonna, he already did that. He, he's not going to do anything. That, that's not an answerable prayer. Do you hear me? Yeah. Jesus save them. That's not an answerable prayer. He already did. 
Okay? Well, somebody, somebody's thinking, well, well, didn't Paul say something about, you know, my prayer for Israel is that they be saved? That, that's, that's a poorly translated word. That's my desire for Israel, is that they would be saved. Desire, desire and prayer is two different things. Amen. So don't waste your time. Don't waste your time asking God to do things. He gave us authority. Do you hear that? He gave us authority. If you ask him to do something, he goes, well, okay, but uh, no, use your authority. You, know, you remember the illustration I gave you about Jesus in the boat with the boys? And they're all screaming and hollering and they're afraid they're going to die. And he rebukes the storm. He turns around and says, why didn't you do this? Be, well, well, Jesus hadn't died yet. He had already transferred authority to them boys. Remember? He gave them power over the devil, didn't he? And they went out and they cast out some devils. They didn't realize that storm was him. Did you hear that? They did not realize that the storm that was trying to drown them was the devil. If you have authority over the devil, you tell it to stop. And he must obey you according to the word, right? Right? The problem is, is we enter into these things and we're looking to see what's going to happen. I'll tell you what's going to happen. Nothing. If you believe that God has given you authority and you walk in the authority that God has given you, then something will happen. The devil knows the difference between let's see what happens and I told you so. Did you get that? He knows, the difference, he knows the difference between let's see what happens and I told you so. And he will not obey the first one. He will obey the second one. Amen. So, here's, so we pray for people. We, we, we pray for people from the standpoint of, you know, we, we, we uh, petition heaven on their, on their behalf. You know what it means to petition heaven? Lord, you've forgiven them. Okay? We bind the strong man because he's the one that's clouding their thinking, and then we send help. There's two kinds of help to send. Two kinds of help to send. Okay? The first one, you know, Jesus said, pray the Lord of the harvest that he'll send laborers. Okay? Pray the Lord of the harvest that he will send laborers. What are laborers? Peoples. You and me. People, uh, and, and, and you know, it's okay to say things like this. Lord, send somebody that knows what they're talking about. Send somebody that's anointed, not somebody just, you know, bops into church every once in a while or something like that because all they're going to do is get tangled up in the mess anyway. Amen. Send somebody that knows how. Okay? So that's the first kind. Jesus said, pray the Lord of the harvest that he'll send, har that he'll send laborers into the field, right? Okay. The second kind, if you'll go over to Hebrews chapter 1. Hebrews chapter 1. You know, we give illustrations so that, so that we have something to relate to. But experience is never the Word of God. You understand what I'm saying? Because we had an experience, we go, well, you know, that's, that's, you know, that's as good as the Word of God. No, it isn't. That's just your experience. It may be a godly experience, all right, but it's not the Word of God. Okay? So Hebrews chapter 1, verse 13 says, But to which of the angels said he at any time... Sit on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. Are they not all ministering spirits? So he's, he was talking about the angels. Okay? So he said, to which, which of the angels said he at, at any time? He didn't. Okay? Sit here until I make my en thy enemies thy footstool. 
Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them? For whom? For them. Who are them? Us. For them who shall be heirs of salvation. So they are sent forth to minister for us. us and people have said this to me. Well, I thought only God can tell the angels what to do. That's not what this says. Okay? We can enlist the help of angels. Not too long ago, my, my, my brother who, uh, by really, if he watches this, hey, you're the one that told me this. And, and, and I wouldn't, my brother's not a spiritual giant. He's not, and he would tell you that himself, okay? He's very honest about his spirituality, that's, and that's a good thing. Before he got saved, there was him and four or five other couples sitting in a room with the pastor, and, and they were doing a, a couple's Bible study, you know, and, and the idea was to get people saved. And so he, so the pastor, uh, as they got started with this deal, he, he went around the room one day and he asked everybody, do you have a relationship with Jesus or are you saved? Whatever he asked them. I don't know what he asked them in particular. But something, you know, something along those lines. And the only person in the room that said no was my brother. He said, no, I'm not saved. And it surprised the pastor because usually people say, well, you know, I go to church, you know, and, and not all the time, but, 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 you know, a bunch of baloney. My brother said, no, I'm not saved. The pastor goes, really, you know that? He goes, yeah, I know, I'm not. He said, the, that was the only person in the room that he had hope for. <laughs> only honest person in the room. Okay? So, not long ago, he's at a men's prayer meeting, and, or not prayer meeting, but a men's Bible study at the church that he goes to. And he's just sitting there listening, and the pastor's talking about something. And he's just sitting there. He's not looking for anything. He doesn't feel anything. He's not looking for, you know, God, please. He's not doing anything. He's just sitting there. He said, all of a sudden, the room disappeared. And he's looking out across this field. And he said, there's angels, just, you know, hundreds of them, standing all around this field. He said, a few of them, not very many, but a few of them were standing over a demon with their sword out. And they were given this command, don't move. And then, the, and then it disappeared. He didn't hear anything. He didn't hear a voice out of heaven or anything. He just saw this thing. I said, what did that mean to you? He said, it means to me, now this, my brother, he just never heard teaching like this. He never, he, he didn't, he doesn't, Go to churches that teach stuff like this. Here he hasn't, let me put it that way. Okay? He said, it means to me that most people don't tell their angels what to do, so they're just standing around. He said, most of them are just standing around. They're just standing around. And meanwhile, people are going to hell. Yeah, I did say that. And meantime, people are going to hell. All these angels standing around that want to do something, want to keep people free. And we don't tell them, go out there and influence those people. Minister to them. Listen, if a demon can influence you, why can't an angel? Does that make sense? And an angel is going to influence you in one direction, to the Lord Jesus Christ. Because he knows better than do anything different than that. Amen. So we, sit, so, we, so we uncloud their mind by binding the strong man in their life, and then we send help. We send, you know, we, send, we pray for laborers, and we send the angels. And you go there. Listen, one time, now this is not, this is not Bible. This is just somebody's experience. There's, there's a minister that I know that uh, he had a sister that was a drug addict. And he started praying for his sister. And, and, you know, and, he, and he got down and he said, he said, I was just sitting there in my chair. He said, all of a sudden I had this overwhelming feel, feeling I needed to get out of my chair and get on my knees and just, you know, just start praying up a storm, so to speak, you know, in, in the spirit, praying in tongues. So he, he got out of that chair and he got down and he's, and he's, Zaramakasu. I mean, he's going after it. I mean, just, he said for about an hour or so, he's, he's just, you know, I mean, sweating, praying. I mean, just getting after it. He said, all of a sudden, he felt like, whew, everything's okay. And he, he got it, and he sat up, and he thought, wow, what was that? 
couple of minutes later, his sister called him. That drug addict, drug addict sister. <laughs> and she's almost hysterical, but she sounds sane. Okay? And, and she, he says, what's going on? She, she said, I was in the room and I was getting ready to shoot up. He said, all of a sudden, this great big angel showed up in the room and he picked me up and he said, don't you dare stick that thing in your arm and sat her down. It's pretty easy to get free after that. <laughs> now that's extreme, I understand. Okay. But he did send the angel over there to influence her. That's influence. So we take our legal standing because every unsaved person is already in the mind of God an heir. Did you hear me? Every unsaved person in the mind of God is an heir. So we send the angels to influence them. Okay? So we take our legal standing to lift that person up to Jesus. We speak the fact that their transgressions have been blotted out. Their transgressions have been blotted out. The devil has no reason to hold them. Right? The devil has no reason to hold them. We claim that, pers that person's salvation in the name and by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus, you shed your blood for them. We claim them for you, whoever that person, name them by name. That We claim them for you in Jesus' name. Your blood has set them free. Pray, we pray that the eyes of their understanding will be opened. We bind the strong man that he will not cloud their spiritual vision. So they'll have that moment of clarity and say yes to Jesus. Amen? We send angels to influence them and we pray for workers to go and speak to them. As a church, we're supposed to be praying people out of darkness. So, well, you know, who? Just, you know, walk up to your neighbor and say, what's your name? What's your name? You know, hey, I, hey I'm Greg. What's your name? Shake their hand. I'll tell you your name. Then you go, okay, thank you. And I just want to talk to you a little bit, blah, blah, blah. You know, find out their spiritual situation. You find out they're not a Christian. If they're not a Christian, you go home and then you do this. Because if you just keep, I mean, you, we do want to build a relationship. We want to do those kinds of things. You understand that. But we pray because without the prayer, all the relationship in the world won't do any good. Amen. So we pray. We pray people out of darkness. There's a lot of darkness around here. It's, it's not as bad as the place I pastored at before. It really it isn't. But there is a lot of darkness around here. The, the last place I pastored, when I come over the hill to go to the... the uh, there's a mountain pass, not a real high mountain pass, but there's a mountain pass. You know, we have mountain passes in the desert. There's a mountain pass you have to go through. And as soon as I went over that pass, I'd never been to this city before, before I went up there to check out the church. And I come over this mountain pass. It was within 100 miles of my hometown. I'd never been there. And I come over this mountain pass, and it was like, you know, you know how you get out in the desert in the summertime, you get out where the, where the fields are at and everything, and all of a sudden there's bugs just go all over your windshield. That's what it felt like, spiritually speaking. Just like, I was like, ooh. I, I was thinking, I don't think I want to go down there. <laughs> this is bad, man. <laughs> I, I was just, I was in that church for just a couple of months, and the local uh, local witches, uh, what do you call them, coven, sent me a letter, and they they've been up on the mountain, and they, you know, they're stirring up the devil and all that, whatever it said in that letter, and I went. Threw it away. You can get somebody to pray for you. I got authority over that. I'm not scared of them. Amen. 
Ahmad should have prayed for some people in the church, because <laughs> they're goofy. <laughs> Hallelujah. So we, we want to pray people out, amen? So we can't really do this as a group because, you know, we'd have to call out all kinds of names and everything, and, you, and you're, not, you're probably not prepared anyway. Maybe some of you are, but, but take this with you and, and go back and go, okay, because some of you know some folks right now that need to be saved. You, you go down and write that thing out. If you want me to, uh, send me a note and say, well, I, I, can you send that to me? That you know that format can I'll send it to you. How to do that? You know, once you do it a couple of times, then you, then you won't need the notes anymore. But, Amen. But we need we need we need to get people out of darkness, and you pray people out of darkness. You don't argue them out. That doesn't work. I see it every you know Facebook every day, people trying to argue people out of darkness. It's just a waste of time. You know, think of it this way, you know. There's this old country expression or saying, never give a pig a bath. It irritates the pig and it gets you all dirty. <laughs> and that's what happens when you try to argue people out of darkness. It irritates them and gets you all dirty. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 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 You know, when I... We used to frequently pray and, you know, lay hands on handkerchiefs and send them out. And... Uh, there's this one family, they kept sending handkerchiefs back to Texas. That's where they were from. And they're, you know, they're, they're always coming up with these glowing reports about how God had healed somebody or saved somebody or something. You know, it just it happened over and over again. And I'm thinking, why don't they give them to people here? <laughs> why don't they give them to people here? You know, I mean, they send them back to Texas. I mean, Thank God that these, those, those folks in Texas were getting help. But we live in Arizona. I mean, amen. Huh? Well, some family, but a lot of them were just friends. I just. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let's make sure we got things done. 